to the stinger. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Aluminum foil for our armature. You'll want to grab a sheet of that and just give it a good scrunch to get the rough shape of the body that you're after. Next you'll want to grab some aluminum foil, sticky tape. Now this is an extra step but I find that it prevents bubbling in the clay so grab some of that Peel it apart and just apply it to your basic armature, like so. Once you're happy with that and you've cleaned up your workspace, you'll want to start with some polymer clay. I'm just using Sculpey Primo here and I've got the yellow. Now just throw it on over your armature like so and then you can come in with some extra pieces of clay to beef it up to get that lovely dinosaur shape. Here I'm using my most favourite tools, my fingers, to give it a nice smooth out. You don't have to be too perfect here, we just want it to look roughly amazing. Next we're going to start working on the limbs. So when I do this, I actually use my pasta machine at size 2 and measure out some bowls. That way they're all about the same shape and size. The first ball will be the head of the dinosaur with some beautiful aqua eyes. You'll want two of those. Just push them in there and give some eyebrows to make him super cute. Next you'll want to hack open that little face of his and give him a nice big cheesy smile. I've got my silicon tip tool here with a rounded edge just to give him that like uplifted cheekiness. And when you're happy with that, just make sure that if you're adding any cute accessories that they're going to fit appropriately later. And of course, if you're going to do an open mouth, I highly recommend adding a little tongue for extra cheek. Now he's going to want to breathe some air, so I've just got my ball tip tool here and I'm poking in a couple of holes. And a final check to make sure that spoon still fits in his chops. The next part is working on the limbs. So for the first one here, I am working on the front arm. So just get your rough shape. And then I've cut in a couple of slots here for the claws. Using my silicon tip tools here as well, I am using them to get the shape of the actual claws themselves and the little meaty bits in between these little fingers. Just keep playing with it until you're happy with how it turns out. I actually have a full tutorial on how to do this effectively over on my Patreon. Next we're going to be doing the hind legs. So I've got two balls of clay here for that. One is for the chunky rumpy bit with his body warty and the other piece is for the lower half of the leg with the foot and the knee. So once you've sort of gotten a hind bummy chummy, you can move on to the foot part. Now it is very similar to doing the front claw. So I've hacked out some little slots there for his claws. Come in with the silicon tip tools once again to decorate them however you desire. And I've given him a little dew claw as well on the back. Once you're happy with all of the detailing on that, you can attach it to his rumpy jumpy. And you'll want two of those. Just testing to make sure they walk nicely. Okay. Time to assemble. So head on first. And then attach the rest of the limbs. Ta-da! I think he looks pretty darn adorable. 
This is why I love this positioning too, because you don't need to use an armature in the limbs. Okay, now time to banana him up. So I've just got some extra pieces of clay here, which I'm using as the peel banana effect. And of course, to give that distinction between an open banana and the peel, I'm coming in with my beloved pan pastel in a pastel yellow shade and just covering the entire face, the insides of the peel and his chest. And then coming in with a dark brown pen pastel to do the dirty little splotches that you'll find on a ripened banana. Pop him in the oven. Make sure to check the instructions on your particular clay brand. And now for the fun part, we get to decorate him like he is the banana splitosaurus that he is. So I'm starting off with some ice cream here. I've got a vanilla, chocolate and strawberry flavor. Just using a bit of aluminum foil scrunched up to give that ice cream texture. And using some liquid sculpey just to attach the flavors onto his back. Make sure to attach them properly so they don't look all out of place. And I'm just using a dental tool here to do so. Next, we're going to create a little bit of a waffle slice or a cracker or a chip or whatever you call it in whatever country you're from. Just using a little square tool here. And my ziggy zaggy tool as well. Sorry guys, I don't know the official names for these things, but I can give a rough description. Pen pastels once again, and just lightly dust over that so it looks all nice and baked up. And you want to bake that piece too so it's nice and hard. So when we come in later, we can push it into the ice cream. And no banana split is a banana split without some little cherries on top. So since this is supposed to be a Dilophosaurus, I'm doing two cherries on top to represent the little lumps on their heads. And a third cherry for the ice cream. Using some flexible armature wire that I happen to have laying around in black, just cut off a few pieces to make the stems on the cherries. And coming in with our little slice of waffle cone. Just pushing that into the unbaked ice cream clay. Now he's ready for his final bake in the oven. So pop him in. On to the details. So chocolate tip claws, of course. And a little bit more detail for those little ba banana spots. And this is the fun part, guys. We get to add the icing and the sprinkles. Ah, this adds the pop of color that I absolutely adore on my pieces. So I'm just using a deco sauce here. I'll be sure to pop a link below in the description. And some sprinkles that are made out of polymer clay. And that's really all there is to it, folks. Just have fun decorating. And on to the glam shop. 